Right. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to start off uh, today. I think we will have. We'll try and keep this as short as possible so that we won't keep you away from lunch, and you'll be uh, not too hungry before you get there. So I'd start off with uh, Andre. Andre, if you can run us through. Do you have a presentation, or you could you no. just talk through something? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Okay, so as people roll in, I'll start my, my speak uh, test. Okay, so Cleantech Solar is, we just turned three years old recently, and our first asset just crossed the second year of its birth. So this is, uh, it's a reason to celebrate, but it also shows you that you do not have a lot of a lot of PV systems in India at an advanced age. So you wouldn't have sufficient amount of data to know how these assets would work, let alone for five years or 10 years. I'm sure there are older PV installations in the country, but at least in our portfolio, two years is the maximum. So what I do, I use my experience from more than 10 years in PV, and the data I have from other sites, uh, like in Singapore, I, I, I live in Singapore for 12 years, and I, I know how PV system works in a tropical environment for 10 years. So that's, that's what I know. Now it's about replicating some of that knowledge to India. So first, first of all, when, uh, when my boss told me, get on a plane, for this event, my colleagues were laughing at me in Singapore because I was mocking them that they were on 40 Celsius uh, weather two weeks ago. And they're like, ah, your turn will come. Because last time I was here, it was winter. And then suddenly, now I'm on the 40 Celsius and they're laughing back home. But I'm glad I was invi invited for this event. And some of you I already know because of, um, of a, a another conference on O&M that took place in early February. So some of the things I'm going to say might sound repetitive, but what I wanted to highlight to you is that our assets in India are working quite well, much better than what I had envisioned. When I took over the role of head of O&M one and a half years ago, I was like bracing for impact because all, that, all I had heard from India I, uh, in terms of the quality of the grid. So I, I really, so p in our models, we use 98% uptime. So I was like, I don't think this is going to be achieved. So brace for impact. But now, now that I have been dealing with PV system data here for one year plus, I can tell you the stories that I heard are worse than they really are. However, on the soiling aspect, this is really more than I had anticipated. So uh, that's why we wrote a publication last year to address the soiling rates that we had in our portfolio. That was one part of the publication. And the second part was about air pollution here in, in New Delhi. Because the first time I came to India was November 2015, and I couldn't see the sky. So I was like telling my boss, we're bleeding. We're bleeding massively. And now let's find out how much are we bleeding. And I can tell you, there's a paper on this. You can write me an email I can share with you. Annually, we're talking about 6% reduction of yield for a PV system in, in Delhi. So we used to see these PV system reports showing 14 um, 1450 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak and I told my colleagues this is not possible and back in the conference in February I actually challenged anyone in the audience to bring data to me of any PV system in in Delhi which is greater than 1400 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak and now I'm going to change my challenge from that day a bit because one of our assets is almost at 1400 and that one is tilted 27 degrees smack south 
and the cleaning uh, regime is very much uh, pristine. But then you can see that everything is going on in favor of that system and it's barely scratching 1400 per year. So sometimes we go bid for a project and our competitor is telling our potential future client, I can guarantee 1450. And we're like, our portfolio is operating at 1350, 1300 in, in India. So we have this lack of information, I have to say. So what I try to do apart from managing our portfolio is to disseminate knowledge on that aspect. So, uh, but we have adjusted our business models to account for this loss. And, you know, now we're checking how far from downtown Delhi you need to be in order to be fully outside of the blast zone. So this system that is uh, reaching 1400 is 80 kilometers from here. So we have a few sites which are 10 or 20 kilometers from here. Those are not going to reach 1400. I can tell you that. Even if you, you have a hose there and clean the system every day, you, you're not going to reach 1400. Uh, quickly, some of our clients like Apollo Tires, uh, Cognizant, NBC Bearings, Ashoka University. So we focus primarily on rooftop. However, some of our clients have land just outside of their premises. So that's the beauty here with the availability of land. In Singapore, we have no, no ground mount systems. Everything is rooftop. But then some of our clients are saying, okay, you did the roof for us, and now 20% of our loads are covered by PV. How can you get me more, the 80%? And then they point to the ground outside and say, can you build a ground mount for us? Two megawatts, three megawatts. So now we're doing this. We're grabbing this other type of low-hanging fruit, but nothing in the tens of megawatts. I'm sure some, most of you here are from the ground mount space. So uh, rooftop is our bread and butter. We have a 2.6 megawatt PV system in Coca-Cola, Cambodia. And the beauty is because we took so good care of Coke in Cambodia, now they are offering us other roofs in other countries, in Vietnam, in Malaysia, even in India. So that, that, that is the message, uh, is a positive message that if you do systems professionally and the quality is there, the clients will give you repeated business. Uh, maybe a, a few last words um, about, so when a PV system is in the south of India, so we have a lot of assets in Tamil Nadu, and then I knew the weather in, in Chennai is very much similar to Singapore. So I wasn't worried much. And now that the assets are running, we're getting the yields uh, we had intended to, the investors, had, dream, had dreamt about those yields, we're getting those. So that has, uh, has brought some peace of mind to everyone. Because the IRR, the return on investment in India is excellent. It's very sunny, it's 20% more sunlight here than in Singapore. So the, and the cost of deploying the system is much lower. So the IRR here is excellent. However, the error bar on the IRR is high. So let's say the IRR is 12, but then we can get 13 and we can get nine. And that causes a bit of agitation if you are the financier or if you are the board. Versus in Singapore, the IRR is much lower, let's say eight or 7%, but the error bar is 0 0.2 because we know, at least me and my colleagues, we know the system is going to produce like this and the grid is not going to trip. The good, the, my final comment is that the variability of this error, this error bar for the India IRRs is diminishing. And our technical team is growing rapidly. When I joined, we were a few people. Now we have 30, 40 engineers. So our assets are doing much better now. And this is the place to be. There's a lot of uh, opportunities here. And I'm happy that our company has 70% of our portfolio in India. So let's deploy more solar systems. Still lots of solar systems until you reach 100 gigawatts, right? Thank you.
Thanks, Andre. That was quite enlightening. Uh, so I'm quite sure now that you have more data points, it's easier to predict. I guess scheduling prediction, your IRRs, all those will be much easier. I think the the requirement is also of a, of a pan India database, specifically on the rooftops. While we might have that on the ground mounted systems, people are very loath to share data. That's that that data sharing attitude still hasn't come into into the country where everybody holds on to their data like it's IP. So nobody's willing to give you what's happening at their plant. So I think there has to be a lot of government push towards that to open that system. We had that in Charanka. Uh, where they would publish it on a yearly basis, but now even that's sliding. So my request, and I, I think if there are enough developers in the room, is that if we can form, I mean, you don't have to, you can be anonymous about it, you can maybe, but that will help the entire industry as a whole. Yeah, yeah, sorry, can you hear me? <coughs> yeah, so it'll help the, uh, to recap. So basically, if we can form an anonymous database specifically for the rooftops, where it will help because the rooftops are where the major growth is going to be in the future. Uh, while not from the gigawatt volume, but from the actual power to homes volume. So next I'd like to invite uh, Alan Kao. Alan, you have a presentation or? Yeah, okay. I'll invite Alan to the desk. Alan is uh, architect solar and uh, he will present on it. Thank you, Mr. Ritish. Uh, it is an uh, honor here to, today to share some ideas about solar trackers. So in the morning time, we, uh, we see uh, Ms. Tanyan share some ideas from the finance perspective, how the trackers will be affect the RRs for solar plants. So I still remember about two years before, uh, I was in the IR, uh, REI exhibition in Grenoida. So we shown one demo tracker in the exhibition. So a lot of clients come and they ask a lot of questions and they're very interested, but no one buy it. But only one year later, in 2016, there's about more than one gigawatt solar installation for tracker project in India. We see this very huge change. But still today, many clients do ask me, Alan, what is a tracker? How it works? So today I want to answer this question from the very beginning. What is tracker? Tracker is a mechanism to allow the solar panel to get more direct radiation so that it can get more generations. We can say solar tracker is the most efficient way or efficient equipment to help the investors or developers to increase the IR of a solar plant. Of course, now we are also facing much pressures because the, uh, the PPA price is getting lower and lower. So all the equipment vendors are facing the pressure solar modules, solar invert, uh, inverters, solar structures and trackers. Every company facing the cost pressure. I think it's normal. Since uh, I have been in the solar industry also more than eight years, nine years. So I have seen the solar module price dropped from two years dollar, now to 35 cents. So it is the trend. And you have to follow it. You have to do innovations, creations to match the target. So today we have a look at from uh, technical points and from market points, how we can reach this target. So this is the trackers you have been, you can see from the market. It is dual light tracker and single light trackers. So for dual light tracker, now it's becoming less popular because the high cost and the high land consumption. And now the single light tracker is becoming more and more popular, popular in most of the countries. So for single light tracker, you can also find horizontal single tracker and 2D single tracker. But in India, we're talking about it is horizontal, uh, horizontal single tracker only because this is, can be used on the low latitude area, which is India is a very perfect uh, area. So we are expecting around from north to south, we're expecting around 10% to 20% power increase by using solar trackers, uh, horizontal single trackers actually. So this is the one more thing we call Manual tracker, which is also very popular here in the market, is also being called seasonal tilt trackers. So it's manually, you change the angles twice a year or three times a year. So horizontal single tracker is the thing we're gonna talk about today. So this is the GTM's uh, research data form. If you can see the global solar tracker market change 
from 2015 to 2016, the global installation capacity of solar tracker increased from 7 gigawatt to 11 gigawatts, which is around a 63% increase. That's a big change. If you look at the uh, installation capacity of global, it is 11 gigawatts. That is almost 20% of the total solar capacity. And according to GTM research, this number will be increased to 45% by 2022. That means around 30, 30 40 gigawatts of and solar structures. Just one second, just to correct everyone, that's not megawatt, that's gigawatt. So no, gigawatt. don't sorry. read it as megawatt because that is a really, really small number. Okay, sorry, should be gigawatt. Thank you, Rizish. Yeah. So that means uh, after three years, five years, the solar tracker market could be reached to 30, 40 gigawatt capacities. So that's, that's a very exciting number. So currently, US, uh, United States is still play the main role in the solar tracker market. You can see this seven gigawatts. So it is almost 60%, uh, 70% of the total installation capacities. And uh, Latin American used to play a main role, but the number is going smaller from 1.45 to 1.11 gigawatts. And here is the black horse. We can see the Asia Pacific market. It increased by 258% from only 600, uh, 650 megawatts to 2.33 gigawatts. That's a very big increase. So if we look into this Asia Pacific market, so the India and China is playing the main roles for the, for the numbers. So especially in India, last year the tracker shipments arrived 1.45 gigawatts. So around, this means around 1.45 gigawatts solar tracker projects is commissioned or under construction. And China also contributes 719 megawatts. So India and China is becoming the most popular solar tracker market. And if you look at the market share, China is the biggest market share in the solar. And India this year will be, become the top three, right? Be more than J Japan become top three. So that means in Asia Pacific, there's a big potential market for solar trackers. And especially in India, last year, almost 20% of the total capacity is using solar tracker products. So this is a table that almost all the tracker vendors in this chart. So if you look at into this table, you can find this dual X tracker designs and single X tracker designs. For the single X tracker designs, basically there's two different technologies. One is called centralized design. One is called decentralized designs. So currently these two designs, we can have half, half share of the market share. But if you look at this red circle, you can find almost 11 companies in this small area. This small area is centralized design tracker and all of these vendors are both doing fixed structures and trackers. That means they are able to produce the product they designed. So we can see the market trend. This means more companies also join the market. So some new vendors also from India and from China join the solar market. And so now we can see the trend will more companies focus on the centralized tracker design. But still, decentralized design is still pay, playing a very main role in the market. So now let's talk about some, something about technologies. So I want to ask a question, what is a good design tracker, a tracker design? That means how to design a tracker? So to answer this question, we have to go back to the first page. What is a tracker? The tracker is a mechanism to allow solar panel collect more direct irradiations. In order to collect more irradiations, the basic thing you have to make the tracker moving. Whenever the tracker stops, it cannot get, uh, collect more radiations. It will collect less. So according to our testing, about 40% less generation you can get if the tracker stops. So that means when you design a tracker, the stability and durability is the most important thing you have to consider. You have to make the tracker working good and working well. The second thing is uh, applicability. That means you have to adapt different kind of land. And I think now the land is becoming tougher and tougher to find the suitable land for solar plants, not only for trackers, suitable for solar plants. Some land you can just 
you cannot install solar plants. So this you have to adapt. You have to do some innovation on the design. And the last but not the least, actually, the most important thing everybody is uh, expecting is the cost optimization. So how to reduce the cost of the tracker? Should we only optimize the design or should we think somebody from the other ways? How to reduce the total cost of the solar plant? So we're gonna get into this point. The first is about the stability and durability. Simple is stable. So in order to design a stable tracker, you have to make the design very simple. How to make design very simple? You have to use less number of the part. You have to use very simple parts. All the parts should be profile studios. That means I-beam or C-section or square tube, which you can easily find from the market. That means even something happens in the future, or if you worry about the tracker company is not there anymore, so you can find replacements from the market very easily. Less number also means easier for installation. It also means you spend less time on the installation. So your civil cost, your APC cost are also reduced. And the second thing is very important. So uh, it is about the electrical part. So we, we also want to introduce this, uh, this new technology called redundancy design. If you look at the pictures, you can see this design have two, mo two motors. These two motors will work at alternative days. So whenever one motor fails, the other one will automatically take place. And so we use this conception not only on the motors, also on the power supplies, on the sensors, on the control boards. That means in most of the time, even something happened to the control box, you don't need to worry about it. They will keep moving. So you only need to do some routine maintenance you don't need to send engineers at site immediately when something is wrong because the tracker doesn't fail. It's still moving and there's no compromise on the generations. Uh, the other thing very important uh, we want to say is this is also the trend of the market. You have to reduce the number of electric parts. So from the photos you can see uh, this is one of our projects, a 60 megawatt project we have commissioned uh, in Canada, uh, sorry, Tirgana. So we can see in the red circle, uh, in the red circle is the control and driving system. So you can see this is the centralized design. Centralized design means you design a system to link all the rows together to use only single one motor to drive all the rows to move together. So by doing this way, the tracker block can be very big you can up to 300 kilowatts or even bigger. That means for one megawatt, you only need three to four tracker systems. But for, for the decentralized design, also being called individual design, it is around 25 kilowatts per row. That means you have need 40 controllers, 40 motors, and 40 sensors for, per megawatt. So by using centralized designs, you can reduce the electrical powers, which the other way, you can increase the stability. Of course, to reduce the number of electric parts, you can also help to reduce the cost. The second thing is about applic applicability. So for most of the tracker in the market you can find, it's easily to adapt east to west slope. You can adapt five degree or 10 degree or even more. But most of them have the same question is, it's hard to adapt north to south slope or terrain. Why? Because you see the, you see the name of the tracker, it's called horizontal singlet tracker. That means the axis have to be horizontal. The axis is a north-south direction. So you have to keep the land as a horizontal slope from north to south. That means to manage this, you maybe you have to do some uh, land leveling or you have to use different designs, for example, use different lengths of the column post to manage the axis in a horizontal way. That means the longer the axis it is, it is harder to manage. That's why we also think the trend will be go to centralized designs so that you can reduce the row of, uh, the, the length of the rows. So for this individual row design, you can say it is normally 80 to 90 modules. That means could be up to 
90 meters. And for this smaller uh, centralized design, the north to south lens can, only, uh, can reduce to 22 meters. So it's easier for the uh, solar plant to adapt a very complicated land. Okay, uh, last but the most important part is the cost optimizations. Uh, actually, our company have done a lot of things to control the cost. So there are different ways you can think about. Just like uh, the last session, uh, many experts have already mentioned, we cannot only expecting the solar module price drop. So every value chain have to think about how to control the cost and then match the target. For example, solar module, not only you reduce the price, you can also increase the power rate, right? You can use 300 watt module or you can use 330 watt module. By using high efficient modules, that means directly you can reduce the BOS cost, right? You can use higher overloading, but you don't need to increase any of the BOS. So this is one way. From our side, we can do some optimization on the designs to use, use less use or we can optimize the profiles to reduce the sickness. Well, this is the only the normal ways. There must be some limit. You cannot cross that so that the safety of the uh, uh, solar plant cannot be compromised. For example, if you look at the market, the fixed structures, the tonnage per megawatt is being reduced from 45 tons to 40 tons to 36 tons. Now, I, 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 I even see like 25 tons per megawatt in the market. But there must be a limit, right? You cannot do 10 tons, right? So track is the same. You have to find different ways to do it. From our side, we think only working on the tracker to reduce the tracker cost itself, it doesn't work. You have to work on a, a bigger way. That means how to reduce the entire solar plants. So now we introduce the solar tracker plus stream inverters or solar tracker plus central inverter designs. We call it integrated design. So by doing this, because for, for inverters, you're going to use powers, you're going to use communication cables, and tracker, you're going to use the same. So if we combine the tracker control box and the inverter box together as an integration design, so we can share these cables. You can, you can share the power cable and the communication cable. If we use PLC cable, that means only one cable for the inverters and for the trackers, it is enough. Cable cost reduced and the civil cost reduced. And also one way, if we use this integrated design, we can also get, we can get power from the inverters or we can, I mean the tracker, you can get the power from the inverters. And if the inverter doesn't work, we can also mm -hmm. have an option to get power from the solar module directly, since we are also using DC motors. So this is a power backup. We can move the tracker to still position, even there's no power from inverters. So this can save the cost of UPS. And uh, if we think tracker is a platform which can combine with different equipment, we're just talking about tracker plus inverters. We can also talk about tracker plus modules. We already work with some top inverter companies and also work with some top uh, module companies to do these innovations. So on the solar module frame, we can do some designs which can be allowed very easily installation. That means you can just put the module on the square tube and it is done. That means you save your installation time. Time is money. And uh, to catch the commission dates is more important. So by doing all of these integration ways, you, you can expect uh, you can expect a very big cost reduction for the entire solar plant, not only for the solar tracker. So by the way, we uh, already use this design in India, and this year we, ha we will have more than 150 megawatts to use these integration designs. The other ways we, you have to uh, applicable to all the new technologies, for example, uh, Everybody is talking about 1,500 volts solar modules, which you can reduce cable costs, cable costs, other things. So the tracker also need to follow this change so that you can share all of the benefits of new technologies, of new designs of solar modules. 
So this is also customization by uh, applicable to different lands because the land is hard and hard to find. So you can use for agriculture and you can use for fish pond. That means you can reduce cost of the land. The last thing is uh, one manual tracker. Uh, this has been very popular. I think I think more, more than gigawatts of, of uh, projects have been using these designs. But here I want to introduce a different design. Uh, because there's two concerns for me for the single tube design I have seen in the market. One is you need a lot of people to move it, at least six to eight people, maybe take 10 minutes or 20 minutes to move one table. The other thing is when you move it, it's easy to have twist on the solar modules, which will be lead micro crack on the solar cells. So to save this uh, problem, we introduce this uh, kind of new design. And with, I think in the, in the future, there will also uh, be a design trend Oh, sorry. So you can see this only one lady can move this seasonal tube design. You can easily adjust uh, the angle within several seconds. So one people, one day can move easily one to two megawatts. By doing this way, there's no micro crack because you can see the entire table moving at the same time. And you can move different times. In a normal design, you move twice or three times. But this design, you can move whatever you want, eight times, 10 times. Just, I have five, just hire four or five people, they can do it easily. So I think today's uh, presentation can give you some ideas that our, uh, for all the MMS and solar tracker companies, they are thinking, they are doing innovations, they are working very hard to help you to achieve your solar plan target. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. I think that was quite uh, a deep uh, dive into what actually solar trackers are.